that's nice. What's up guys, it's RevJ again, back out in the garage. I got the Hatred Copter C10 next to me. And if you've been following that build or any of my associated builds for a while now, you know all the fabrication work, 99% of it, was done using the Hobart Handler 210 MVP. Now this thing has been a phenomenal welder. I've had it for like, I think five or six years now. It's done all the body work on the truck multiple times. It's done the work on the frame. It's done lots of stuff for the suspension. Really anything you'd need to weld, it's done for me and done without question. Works on the 115 or the 230 volt, so in any garage you can just plug and play. So while that machine's been absolutely great, I'm at a point now where I've got a bunch of projects involving aluminum. And of course, a MIG welder, well, isn't the most useful thing on aluminum. Of course, unless you add a spool gun. Spool gun, spool gun, spool gun. So I think you guys see where this is going. I went ahead and picked up the uh, Hobart Spool Runner 100 spool gun for doing aluminum work on my existing 210 MVP. And as you guys know, Hobart is made by Miller, and there's a lot of crossover between this 210 MVP and the slightly upbranded Miller 211 MVP. The 211 has auto set voltage and a few other features like that. And for the sake of comparison, since they're so often compared together, I have the Miller equivalent of the same spool gun, the one that you would use with the 211 MVP. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this one. And then again, for the sake of comparison, we will take a look quickly at the Miller branded one and see why they're different and why they can't be interchanged. All right, there is the Spool Runner 100. Real quick, let's pop open the Miller equivalent and just take a look at what it comes from. Obviously, you see right away, pretty much the exact same case. We'll take a look at that a little bit closer in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the Miller branded one here. And right inside, we've got our manual and instruction card right there on top. That's got your little wiring diagram, all that sort of stuff. Here's the Spoolmate 100 series. That's this again, Spoolmate spool runner. Otherwise, you're gonna see a lot of similarities, I suspect, here. There is, there you go, the spool gun itself. It's got a vented plastic body, decent trigger feel on it there. There's your little spool holder. It's got, of course, the Miller branding on it. Uh, surprisingly, nothing is blue. Miller likes everything to be blue. There is no blue anywhere on this, which I, I think is definitely odd. Not even the, uh, the trigger, this is all red here. Um, got the nice tip on it there. It's got a uh, coiled reinforcement for the cord here. Nice, thick cord. Again, there's no uh, there's no wire traveling through this like you would have on a normal MIG cord, so it can be crunched up quite a bit more. Take a look at the plugs here. You have, there is your wiring connector and your plug uh, that goes into the receiver thing on the welder body, and of course, you've got your gas pass through there. Uh, keep in mind, take a look at what this looks like. Keep that in your head. Just kind of hold that mental image there. I'll freeze frame it for you. Really on the plug, really on the plug. Yeah, so keep that in your head for a couple seconds. Now let's set this aside and take an unboxing at the Spool Runner. It's got the Hobart brand on the front of it. Rapida y facil de instalar. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna assume it's in Spanish that a fast installation or something. I don't, I don't have a clue. This is, why is this, I'm an idiot. Let's start that again, shall we? Uh, this side's in English. Holy crap, I'm having a rough day. Pretty uh, pretty easy to tell you, quick and easy to install. There you go, if you want a translation, just flip the freaking box over. Uh, again, like I was saying, it's got the Hobart Orange, Hobart branding, direct plug-in spool gun exclusively for handler 190 and handler 210 MVP, MIG weld 18 gauge quarter inch aluminum, also for use on mild and stainless steel applications, rated 150 amps at 60% duty cycle. Uh, that is not too terrible. The 60% duty cycle is of course one of the things that if this was a production welder or something that was gonna be used out on the line making ladders or aluminum trailers full time, uh, that would kind of come into play and be a little bit of an issue. But of course this isn't for that. I don't think I have the advertised spec on the Miller. I'll see if I have it and see if we can compare if there is a big difference on that. Uh, and we have easily accessible drive rolls, threaded nozzle and contact tips, screw in, drive roll, tension adjustment, all that other stuff that is pretty much just real, really basic, uh, basic specs. Let's pop the sleeve off, open up the actual case, uh, and see exactly what this thing looks like in here. Of course, Hobart logo, again, compared to the Miller, it's got that Miller branded logo right on there. There's a slope to this at the very tip. Uh, the Miller, am I crazy? I don't see that. 
it looks square down the edge. There's no, let's see, can I do the side profile here? Yeah, that one, uh, okay, interesting. The Hobart does taper off. The actual material though, it's pretty much the exact same, what is it, blow molded plastic? Same texture, all that kind of stuff. The same handle there at the top. Same exact snaps. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. There we go. So we have our instructions right on top. Wow, that is, that's definitely different. So here is the Spoolmate 100 owner's manual and it's got the wiring and stuff like that. This <laughs> Spool Runner 100 is a thin little piece of documentation. As you can see, again, uh, take a look at the way those are laid out. Uh, they are kind of working from a company template there. Let's toss this back aside. We will toss that aside. And there is the unit itself buried under some cords. This has got little Velcro hold-ins. The Miller has the exact same thing in slightly different positions, but executed the same way. Let's take a look at it here. What do we have? Oh, uh, some nozzles. Was that nozzles, tips? Little, uh, I don't know what that is. Little outside screw portion. I don't know what that is for. I haven't worked with this thing before, so I don't really know all the components. Pull out the gun itself. So there is the Spool Runner 100. We've got, again, a very similar uh, plastic body trigger. Eh, pretty similar, similar design. Very similar, actually. Again, the spool holder back here. We've got our nice uh, machined aluminum. Nice nozzle or nice tip there. Again, a... Uh, a cord protector, or what do you call it, a strain reliever. Pretty decent looking cable on this. We'll compare them head to head in one second. Now, what did I say before? There is your wiring connector. Again, keep in mind what that looks like. Let's, let's bring the Miller over here real quick. Okay, I think you guys can see that that is pretty much exactly the same. However, from what I understand, there are some cases in which this layout is actually pinned differently on the Miller and the Hobart and would cause the spool to feed incorrectly. If you guys do ever attempt some sort of interchange, definitely keep that in mind. Some things can be used interchangeably between the Miller and Hobart products. This, however, is not one of them. And again, segueing there, what did I say before? Keep that shape in mind on this one over here. And now take a look at what we have on the Hobart. It is a significantly smaller lug. The gas passage and O-rings are located slightly differently and they are of a different size. Let's bring the Miller over here just a little bit if we can and compare them head to head. They both have a strain reliever. The cords honestly look very, very comparable. Again, the cords on the wiring connector, again, also very comparable. I'm snagged up here. There we go. Uh, but there is one of your biggest differences right there. The actual base portion here, exactly the same, but you get up to that lug and it is, uh, it is very different. There is a significant difference in diameter there. I would say the one on the Miller is close to almost twice the size, if not a touch more. Um, the O-rings, of course, are larger. Doesn't have any of this tapering or under anything, and it's just a straight lug that plugs right in. If you take a look at the receptacle over on the actual Hobart welder, it, of course, will not take this style. Uh, if you look at the, of course, the regular MIG gun, it has a passage that is like this that fits into that, uh, that receiver on there that you then tighten down, which gives you your contact and your continuity to the machine. All right, now let's get a little closer and take a look at the differences between the guns themselves. I'm gonna hold them side to side here, and you guys can see there is a very significant resemblance, a very significant resemblance. Of course, all of the venting and the outlets on the handles of both, exactly the same. Of course, Hobart and Miller branding in the appropriate locations. Hardware is all in the same places. The triggers, let's see. I mean, they feel very, very, very similar. My mind might be playing tricks on me saying that the Miller's has a slightly more uh, resistive spring in it. That of course could just be unit to unit. The actual manufacturing material, the manufacturing quality looks just about the same. There's some sort of over flashing here on the uh, Hobart. I don't know if you guys can see that from the casting. Little sandpaper will take that right off. The Miller uh, doesn't have it, but does have flashing in the same area. It just looks like it has been worked. So maybe the, uh, the quality control on the Miller, not surprisingly, a little bit better. The strain relievers and everything at the bottom, those look exactly the same. Again, the cords, the cables look exactly the same as well. Our uh, hose for the gas feed, uh, looks like the same hose to me, the same clamp. Let's take a look up here at the, uh, 
The nozzles, well, I'll tell you what, those should look like the same machined aluminum parts to me. It is the exact same tip, the exact same nozzle. Let's see if we get in there close, you can see that, yep. Sure looks pretty much the same to me, if it'll focus in there. Well, trust me, it does. Uh, the feed mechanisms, well, sure enough, they look like they have the same rollers in them. I don't see a difference. Let's see if there's a part number on them here. The Hobart says 030 something. I don't know if this will be the same. Uh, let's take a look here. Zero, yeah, 0307. So the actual part number on the rollers uh, in the feed there is exactly the same were it to wear out. Now we have the exact same, what is that, the feed sleeve there. This one on the Hobart looks a little pinched. I'll have to be careful of that when I'm feeding wire through it. You can see there, just in case, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, the actual, what do you want, the spool holder, the reel there. Well, I'll tell you what, that looks exactly the same. Of course, Hobart branding versus Miller branding there, as you can see. Okay, here, there's no branding. Can you guys tell the difference between those two? Can you honestly tell me which one of those is the Miller and which one of those is the Hobart? Uh, I don't think you could, not without seeing that branding. Let's flip them over here. Again, everything on the back side is looking pretty much the same. Interesting, the Hobart says Hobart Spool Runner 100. I found the blue. I said there was no blue on it. I found the blue on the back. Doesn't say Miller, but it is blue and says Spoolmate 100 series. Uh, I've got some serial numbers there. I don't know how significant that is. Of course, they are different, but I would imagine if it is a serialized product, they would be. These two units are really, really, really the same. They just kind of hose you, and they use different lugs in the bottom of them, so they don't interchange. That kind of sucks, but I guess it is not the most surprising thing from a big company. You know, there is a lot of part interchange between a lot of stuff on the Hobart and the Miller, but I guess the company's got to get their money out of you somehow, well, more than they already do, and so they're going to do something like this. Uh, I'm sure other companies do something similar. If they make different product lines, they might make different connection styles, which won't interchange. It's a shame. You can't just go buy one or the other. Uh, this one, interestingly enough, I think the retail price on it is like $249. I'll post it up here in the video. Uh, retail price on the Hobart is like $229 or $219, depending where you find it. Believe it or not, I found this one locally on sale for less than 189 bucks, and they even gave me an in-store 10% off. Uh, so for less than 180 bucks, I was able to go ahead and pick up the spool runner here. Extremely happy with that at least. Obviously all the argon tank and stuff works the exact same between both of these. Of course the way it interfaces with the welder is the same either way. So I am super excited to get this thing hooked up. I wanna go get it uh, hooked into the Hobart. If you wanna see it back in future projects, I will definitely be featuring it uh, in pretty much, well, one of the next videos that'll be coming out in which we're gonna go ahead and tackle one of the first projects with this thing. Uh, thanks to my buddy Naeem for letting me borrow his uh, spool mate for the Miller. He's got the 211 MVP, I've got the 210 MVP. You know what, both of them are great machines. Of course, the Hobart is a little cheaper and has a few um, like down market accessories. And of course, a different lug connector on this. What are you gonna do though, right? Definitely guys, check back for more. Just wanted to give you a quick comparison between the two. It's pretty much the same unit, that crucial difference being that lug. Companies are gonna get you right, welcome to capitalism. Check out more from the channel, check out the friends of the channel. I've got a ton more coming up soon. There's always a bunch more videos in the pipe, which I am looking forward to, a couple cool new projects and stuff that's maybe a little different. Everything just fell over. So, like I said guys, definitely check back for more. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I appreciate everybody that subscribed and keeps viewing to this point. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. I can't resist. Bang bang. Bang bang. <laughs> Still a little kid. <laughs>